opportunity. Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. What a what the difference a week will make, no doubt about it, when we're talking about a, an ever-evolving industry here, especially with regard to renewable natural gas. Um, this week uh, was uh, nothing short of exciting. Uh, the stock price briefly went up over $4. There's going to be a short time coming here where these uh, bullshit price targets are going to need to be revised to the upside, uh, and the analyst will begin to start to see it my way rather than uh, their uh, jaded way uh, in a uh, really just an all-out targeted attack on a company um, that's trying to do what it is that they need to do. Um, and and use the uh, their entry to the market in in the way that they've um, that they they took through the SPAC process to uh, gain funding on an idea and an opportunity that uh, is coming to fruition. And I want to welcome everybody to the message. I do this uh, highly on update every week. I will continue to do that uh, where I see prudent to do so. But um, you know the the big news from this week we're going to discuss. Uh, I um, we had another uh, Hypertruck ERX council member uh, place their binding order with deposits. Um, that's going to be great. We have uh, earnings for the second quarter coming up here uh, after the market August 9th. Uh, so something to just keep your eye on. Um, I will be. Um, uh, monitoring those earnings, uh, just like I, I typically do. It is about around earnings where I'll kick into the discord group, which I still continue to foot stump as the single best source of information anywhere in the world when it comes to highly on holdings. Yes, indeedy. This is the big leagues here, folks. We are talking about worldwide application. Just dawned on me this morning as to why it made so much sense for Thomas Healy to go after the domestic market here in the U.S. Um, with um, the legislation being proposed for renewable natural gas, it just made sense that um, they, um, they look to leverage, uh, take this product through validation and certification here in the U.S., and then they can carry those certifications to equivalent levels of certification abroad um, when they look to expand globally. You might be thinking, you know, Ryan, this is a $3.75 stock, briefly above $4 here, extremely undervalued as far as my uh, opinion. We will reach a few thousand people every single week with this message. Um, that is a few thousand more people uh, than I would be able to reach uh, via word of mouth. So I'm okay with that. I know what there will be hundreds of thousands more um, that would have seen this opportunity my way, uh, but this is my way of sharing what it is uh, through my unique lens and perspective on my years of stock market investing and to codify for would be patrons to the message. Uh, and yes, some would still criticize, no doubt about it. Um, the opportunity that I see here in Hyleon, mm -hmm, yeah, it is, it is large. Um, a, all of the stars are aligning, make no mistake about that, okay? Um, things are going very, very well uh, in Hylion, better than I expected through uh, this 2022 bridging phase, which we are still in the midst of. Uh, what does that mean for anybody that's new to the Hylion opportunity? Um, I want to thank everybody that went over to the Hylion.com and did a re-review a lot of people came back and said that was a that was a nice charge that was a a, a good thing to do but um highly is just getting their footing here um they've entered into a period of um tough financial markets with supply chain issues so when i consider this to be a bridging phase highly is in the process of finalizing their design concept getting ready for fleet demos um, a lot of these uh, orders that we're seeing come through at blocks of 10 are just that. They're token orders um, that are going to be introduced in the fleet. Uh, Ruan was the, the, the latest one this week. I will speak about that uh, and my thoughts about what that means for Hylion uh, into the future. Um, but I thought the real flagship news from this week, no doubt about it, was the proposed uh, legislation on the incentive tax credit for renewable natural gas. I will say again, renewable renewable natural gas. It's as if people sometimes need me to say it for a third time, renewable 
natural gas. It is very real and it is absolutely coming uh, in the pike. And this proposed legislation proposed out 10 years, probably for the sheer sake that as uh, renewables, um, uh, especially RNG, take hold and uh, producers and users begin to use this tax credit, um, it will be uh, incumbent upon the government to cap that and uh, relook at it because um, as the uh, landscape evolves and changes, um, those figures as far as who's taking advantage of the tax credit uh, and a potential adjustment into the future will be prudent, uh, absolutely. Um, and so if you guys are unfamiliar with, um, I always put a, a plug out there for the Discord group. There's links all over the place. Uh, I typically leave it to um, the patrons of and the um, administrators within the Discord group to share that. They have my full permission uh, to use this specific conduit to people because as many people as we can get to and um, explain this opportunity, look guys, I can come out with weekly videos and talking about Johnson and Johnson all day, okay? Which I am a heavy investor in Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Home Depot and the like, I own all those. I'm a value investor at heart, um, but highly on holdings right here, this has the power to change lives. And when you talk about the potential at, $4 a stock price right now to begin to enjoy some of this momentum going forward. I have yet to see a better opportunity uh, really unfold in front of our eyes uh, than with this company right here. And I look, I scour the landscape. I'm an avid investor. This is what I do for a hobby. Um, it's not what I do for a living. However, I'm very passionate about my application in stock market investing, and I've never been so convinced uh, that uh, this will be a story that you'll need to follow. Uh, and I am just one of the, the few conduits online. You're going to see a mixed bag of pundits come out with regard to their stock price. Every single one of those have an agenda attached to it. Make no mistake about it. I do not. Uh, I make very little, a few dollars for my time on uh, Sunday when I drop this content. So um, I am separated from any of that uh, type of objective. Now I will disclaim to the group that I am a share owner in the company. I own 12,200 shares in the company currently. Uh, I also own 43 uh, long call contracts on the company stemming anywhere from my lowest strike at $3, which I'm in the money on, and upwards of 5 and 7 and $10, respectively, on each of those call contracts. Uh, whether or not I'll run out of time for my 2023 contracts, January, to be specific, is yet to be determined. I'm being patient on those contracts. But then the, the contracts that I'm most excited about are those that I wrote for 2024. So 43 total contracts, each contract represents my obligation or opportunity to step into 100 share blocks. So 4,300 more shares is what I've got on the uh, option side of the house. And we'll continue to monitor those. Like I said, I'm about 20% in the money on my um, on my $3 strikes because I was just buying on the way down. Um, and now it's time to uh, watch the uh, opportunity, appreciate and value. And I'll openly share that with you guys. So um, we're probably looking at about 16,500 16, of total uh, obligated. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll roll those contracts if they're not looking like they're going to transpire um, or I may let them just go ahead and, and, and fade away. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll have to monitor those six months. A lot can change with this company. Um, I've always suggested that by the end of this year, um, we uh, should be above $10. I mean, we should be above $10 right now. We should be 10, 12 bucks on this, this company, no doubt about it. But market, condition, market conditions, not necessarily for what Hylion is doing here, has driven um, all of the SPAC uh, uh, stocks that came to public markets down. Small cap markets really taking it on the chin and, and people are finding it convenient to not uh, look upon the small cap market with any type of favor. And that is uh, um, headwind pressure that uh, Hylion can't do anything about. And then Hylion's got work to do. Uh, it's not like it's a yellow brick road to, to, um, to the riches. It's not like that. 
Um, this company needs to be hungry. They need to be aggressive. They need to continue to take advantage of and have those discussions with uh, those companies that they're looking to serve uh, and the um, uh, fleets and their customers that they're looking to serve. Okay. So the proposed legislation that I want to bring to everybody's attention, I read the bill twice. Uh, it was uh, well-crafted, very, very simple and straightforward, but I'll share some highlights for you guys that don't uh, want to read proposed legislation, um, uh, but it is interesting. It's named the Renewable Natural Gas Incentive Act of 2022, and where the name would suggest, it does provide for a $1 uh, tax credit for both producers and users of renewable natural gas, okay? Now, there's been some schools of thought and some interestingly heated uh, arguments about renewable natural gas and how it is not a viable solution and how the full electric solution is going to be the end all be all of going green in this uh, current economy and being the most efficient for fleets. Uh, I could not disagree more with that, okay? Um, RNG is uh, a, it, it's ex an extremely, extremely efficient means of taking the off gas methane and actually converting that um, into a usable material. Now, think about solar and wind uh, and hydropower as being somewhat uh, subject to the whims of what the um, uh, the weather patterns are doing. So it's not reliable all the time. Now it is very efficient. I mean, we use them offshore, we use them in land. I know a lot of you guys are going to have your own opinions about that. That's fine. I'm an apolitical channel. I don't get into that very often. Um, but if you are uh, negligent to the fact that those are producing uh, real renewable energies across the board, um, then I think you probably need to wake up and get over your own opinion and biases about that because it is very, very real. Um, and the suggestion that renewable natural gas is not going to be a player in this uh, is disputed by the latest announcement just this morning with Amazon teaming up with clean energy sources uh, to utilize their 27 uh, and uh, fueling stations for renewable natural gas. And I find it ironic that the day after this proposed legislation for the fuel credit and incentive bill uh, for renewable natural gas, that Amazon jumped on board and said, we want to start to solidify our fueling networks uh, for renewable natural gas. So um, I'm not one to pick sides. Uh, I'm not one to argue with people who are not willing to take uh, uh, alternative opinions. I'm certainly not willing to engage in discussion with people who think they're smarter than everybody else. When in fact, the words that come out of their mouth when talking about renewable natural gas, they're just dead wrong. They're just dead wrong. And the facts just do not support what it is that's coming out of their trap. But I guess that's the beauty of social media. You guys can pick whatever information you want. Uh, you can suggest that RNG is dead on arrival, and you can say that it's not going to be a viable uh, fuel source for the future. I beg to differ. Major institutions are getting behind the idea of renewable natural gas. And for you guys that don't know where it comes from, we're talking about uh, the bio waste, we're talking about agricultural landfills, we're talking about the ability to take and harness uh, even as simple as cow manure and put them into what is considered on a large scale to be uh, a, a digester, which it, my dad would be proud of this. He's got a composter um, at his house and we use it all the time. The small amount of food waste uh, that we um, uh, create, uh, we use that compactor uh, composter and it actually creates the most incredible uh, soil that you could ever grow anything in. The idea is just that is that those, um, those uh, 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 materials can be collected and actually put into a digester. And that digester is one that would break down, um, I believe it's the CH4 compound uh, producing the methane. And the methane can then be uh, cleaned and conditioned and actually piped through our existing infrastructure, whether it be through a blend 
or whether it be um, a, a certain percentage of RNG. Okay, now that's key. In the bill, it discusses the very uh, payment of those credits, one dollar uh, per uh, diesel gallon equivalent of RNG is how they will do that for uh, the producers and the users of RNG. Furthermore, it further discusses who are the end using patrons that uh, can use this um, uh, uh, credit here. And that is users uh, of uh, our powering uh, motor vehicles, which Hylion does, right? Uh, and then you sit back and wonder, well, where does the uh, BEV fleet fit into this? They don't. I, I repeat again, they don't. Okay. So my suggestion and premonition is such to uh, probably say that um, Thomas Healy and Andrew Card probably knew that this was coming down the pike many, many moons ago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've been a critic of, of Hylion and their forthcoming information. And if you're paying quite specific attention right now, some of the information that's being released right now is indirectly related to Hylion and not directly related to Hylion. And I think that is incredible. It's creating an incredible opportunity. The momentum in the space, RNG, has momentum behind it. And I think that's phenomenal. Now, the catch here for the producers and the end users of RNG, um, the caveat is such to suggest that the RNG has to be produced here in the United States of America. Fantastic, Jack. I'll take that. Okay. And if you sit back for a second and you look at some of these farms, I'm very uneducated on the um, infrastructure where some would exist that the infrastructure just doesn't exist. In other words, the cow patty that sits in the middle of the field is just where we are right now. And that's just why RNG will fail. Um, that's not true. That is not true at all. Um, the idea is that we do have the science behind um, creating this um, and harnessing this off gas from the, um, the, the bio material, basically, which is defined in the bill on how this RNG needs to be determined. RNG, uh, it's the off gas methane uh, produced by uh, the bio waste. And very simple process of capturing, cleaning, and conditioning the methane to be put to um, our existing infrastructure or piped directly uh, through uh, new initiatives, which are coming online here. Uh, and there is further discussion on this in, in the few uh, talking groups as well about the new initiatives coming online with, with RNG, but the uh, RNG has to be produced in the US. I found that to be very, very interesting. And also the percentage of RNG that is introduced with uh, existing CNG infrastructure. In other words, if it's piped through to produce fuel, uh, no matter what, uh, that percentage of RNG uh, fully applies to, to the credit, even though it's going into a blend. In other words, it doesn't have to be 100% RNG. It's just 27%, 6%, 50%, whatever that is, as long as it's a one gallon of diesel equivalent unit, uh, when compared to how much RNG is being sold by the producer, um, then that will be the renderings of the credit that's offered to both the producer and the end user, which is going to be great because the end user, once the Hylion product through the Hypertruck ERX is sold uh, to the fleets and introduced uh, into the fleets, um, that will be the, um, the end users. That's not including any type of uh, membership credits, anything as far as what they've worked out with ANG, uh, American Natural Gas, to actually provide some in-house credits um, and further incentives for actually signing up. Guys, we take a step back and we look at this proposal here, which again, I earmarked, this is supposed to go into effect December 31st of 2022. In a, a few short months, six months, that's um, uh, assuming that this bill gets passed. I hope that it does. I think it's a step in the right, right direction. Um, something that has um, got me uh, encouraged on the bill itself is that it is with bipartisan support, uh, which is usually pretty, um, pretty important in today's polar, polarized 
political environment and getting anything done. I, I think even some of the staunch advocates, at least now, uh, maybe in two or three months when Hylion goes to 10 or 12 bucks, maybe the narrative will change. And I expect it to, um, that there's no way that um, those folks that were so positive and then so critical and then so positive and then critical again and positive and then critical and positive and critic and pot and keep on to and that and now they're back to positive again um, is not going to continue with that wishy washy application and and jump on board when it is convenient to do so. Um, I would like to give myself a slight pat on the back in that I have never wavered in this opportunity. Uh, I caught the most scrutiny through social media when I was being scrutinizing of the company and their dead silence on the line. Uh, and I will not apologize for that. Uh, I was right. Um, there was people that did not want to hear that. No problem. Um, there's people who still are friends of mine to this day that thought I was absolutely uh, not at liberty to do that. I beg to differ. Uh, I uh, hold publicly traded companies to a level of standard that sometimes publicly traded companies do not hold themselves to. And for a, a company to what I felt like at the time, allow the company to, to slip a little bit on their public outreach campaign uh, was insufficient. And you look at the uh, reciprocation since then, what have they done? I believe that they've turned to 180. And I think where that same scrutiny was being rendered on the onset, I don't think those same scrutinizing ears are willing to acknowledge the improvement in that particular category. And I think Thomas Healy and, and team, they're doing a great job. I do, but I think the sources of some of these information, now the Ruan Hypertruck ERX order, that of course is direct delivered to uh, the news wires uh, for uh, investors to consume and, and, and interpret. Um, but these these uh, proposed legislation with regard to a much broader infrastructure play on RNG really does suggest that Hylion is in the driver's seat. Uh, and it is exciting times. And I cannot stress enough the uh, importance of you guys uh, taking a look at this opportunity now, because I, I, I tell you, again, when this momentum picks up, it's going to be awful convenient for some of these bandwagon players to jump back on board. Again, I don't, I don't even know what I believe. <laughs> so, you know, um, but I was one of those ones that were steadfast through this, through the through the downturn, and 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 even some of the folks that would insist that they've been highly on bulls ever since the beginning, they've gone awful quiet on the line. Uh, I would suggest that I was one of the very few um, amongst a few others as well who have continued to beat the uh, drum for this company when it was the most difficult to do so. Um, the irony for me is I believe that that was the most prudent time to be beating that said drum. Yep. And if people heard and they did their own due diligence and they decided that the upside potential far outweighed the risk of further uh, slippage in the stock price, um, then I think you'll be better for it. And it's uh, speculation at this point to be talking in, in that particular language. Who knows, maybe highly unholding never goes above $4 again. Now, this week was a, a, a nice catalyst to break above that $4 mark. And this video is going to be take on a little bit different form um, in that these uh, so-called analysts right now, um, it's at their price target right now. So it is going to be incumbent upon them. These are $900,000 orders that are be, being garnered one after another, these 10 share blocks. I have no no um, reason to believe that every single of the uh, Hypertruck uh, e ERX Council uh, is not going to have a certain percentage of their fleet devoted to order-backed um, uh, Hypertruck ERXs to introduce in their fleet uh, to begin that uh, kind of one-on-one. -on -one. How does this affect your route? How does the best work practices play for you? And, and how can the Hypertruck ERX really help uh, in driving that uh, bottom line total cost of ownership? Uh, over, you, you know, uh, hundreds or even dare I say thousands within your fleet. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be of interest to me to monitor going forward. But I think this is the calm before the storm. 
I don't know how long this bridging process is going to last. I earmarked the latter uh, portion fall of 2024 uh, as, excuse me, 2023 as being kind of that, um, that earmark of things should be starting to get interesting. Um, I, I think that with plenty of cash on the books, I, I think the ability to generate cash internally is going to be the key here in monitoring the cash burn situation uh, and, and ultimately reaching that equilibrium of, of, of being self-sustaining, which this company is not currently. Um, everything that we're talking about is um, you know, building to that end, and hylion has got a lot of work to do, but let me premise this for you. Um, unlike Johnson and Johnson that I talked about at the top of the the live stream, um, is it going to be, or excuse me, the video, <clears throat> is it going to be safe to suggest that um, Johnson and Johnson has the potential to 10x over the next five years? How about 50x? How about 100x? Right. I asked that rhetorically to put a, a, a dividing line between the value proposition and a Johnson and Johnson and the speculative nature of Hylion and the sheer reality that the majority of their money is going to be realized on the onset in taking this investment prior to a lot of that momentum setting in and taking a foothold in the market right now as I feel like Hylion is still out of favor uh, in the market with all of these small wins coming in, the folks that are doing due diligence on the company and are covering the company and also covering the landscape with such ferocity like Silent Alert on Twitter, who shares that information with regard to the landscape on RNG, you know, that what the grander market is, you know, the deal with Amazon and clean energy, um, those types of things that we know is going on and we wonder why the stock price doesn't move. Patience, my friends, patience. Patience is what it will take to, to continue to traverse what I feel like is that bridging type of uh, situation right now. Um, you guys can join my Facebook group as well. I posted the entire proposed renewable um, Natural Gas Incentive Act of 2022, but I found that to be the most bullish news that was rolled out this week, and uh, I hope you guys see it as well. If you were unaware, please kick over um, and, and link into that and take a read over it yourself. It's only seven pages of definitions and how the actual rule will work. Um, and um, I thought the definitions and the actual uh, striking of verbiage and how the the makeup and the and the uh, the the key uh, takeaways in how the legislation is going to uh, be pushed forward uh, was the real takeaway for me. It was very very insightful, and I would consider you guys to kick over there and take a look. See, um, the second piece of big news I think for the week was the Rwan order. This was uh, let me let me coin this for you guys and. Um, I want to continue to I want to continue to focus on what I have discussed with this opportunity, not necessarily being what it is that we know about the company, but what we don't know, what we don't and can't forecast with respect to incentives that are going to come down the pike, new companies that are going to come online. And we're going to talk about that. There was one additional that was spotted in uh, my area here. Uh, in New York with uh, new customers always um, uh, rolling the hybrid EX product and enjoying those products. But the Rwan order, a lot like the NFI order snuck up on me. I did not expect that. Now it set the stage for some level of momentum to kick off and in giving investors some sort of, a, of an understanding of what is going to unfold over the next few months with regard to getting um, the block of Hypertruck ERX orders and build slots solidified for them uh, and getting those orders turned out to the fleet and starting that fleet validation and, and, and potential improvement. I think 10 it's got some scrutiny this week and I, I don't understand it at all. Um, this is where... Um, I, I guess an uneducated lens would scrutinize an order of 10 and say, that's it, that's all. What needs to be understood about these initial blocks of orders is they're not small potatoes, okay? These are big orders. These are $900,000 orders 
Um, Hyliano realize anywhere from 20 to 30% on the margin for those. That's fine. It's immaterial. It doesn't matter at this point. What does matter is the magic number of 10. What 10 means is it gives them enough route exposure. And I would suggest, I don't know how they're going to roll these out through the fleet, uh, but an opportunity to put 10 units on 10 different routes, whether or not they'll run two on the same long route, or they really want to focus on their bread and butter routes, or they want to uh, focus on those routes that are driven by specific fuel availabilities on the routes. I think these are some of the attributes or conditions that they'll look at within each of the fleets before they introduce these 10. But here's the thing. <laughs> We're looking for fleet validation here, okay? Now, if if all of these fleets, I'll just take the last two, NFI and Rowan, that uh, have their 10 orders placed, if each of these fleets find no deficiencies with the Hypertruck ERX, I would consider that to be an ultimate failure, an ultimate failure. Remember, NFI has been around for 90 years. Ruan is a top 10 privately traded company. It's a private company, but it is a top 10 company. And you notice that if you drive the roads, those crimson trucks out there, baby, those are Ruan and they're very real. They're, they're a player in the space. I'm super, super stoked with Hylion, man, because every time I would look at the Hypertruck ERX Council and see Ruan there, I was like, man, these guys are silent on the line. But the unfold this week was to actually get the insights from Rwan itself, the representative that was there, and actually talk through the experience while in the Hypertruck ERX. Uh, I thought that was extremely telling. I, I thought that it was fascinating. But when I would consider feedback and, and the lack thereof from fleets to be a negative, what I mean by that is, guys, we, we want things to come back. And the question becomes, what is the number that is optimal within each of the fleets to provide ample feedback to Hylion to make those fine tuning adjustments on the tail end of mass scale production to make those integrations before they go to mass market? This is the way I interpret it. You can interpret it however you want. I know there's people that um, would still consider this to be uh, anemic orders, and they're not going to be happy until thousands and thousands of orders are placed on the books. I would contend that those people aren't even invested, if ever, in Hylion anyway. But for the people who are in the know, and they truly understand what those, those marker orders, those blocks of 10 really mean, well, that's what it means. And I would also say that if NFI never orders another Hypertruck ERX past this point, we're done. Hylion will not survive without the in, uh, information from the fleets and from follow-on orders from the fleets. The Hypertruck ERX Council is the tip of the iceberg. We would expect that most of the information that is garnered is going to come from these 10 companies right here. These 10 right here are going to allow Hylion to um, interpret the information, what works, what doesn't work, what works for routes, what works, what doesn't work, how the trucks actually perform under load, what, how does it perform in hilly uh, country, how does it perform in flat country, how does it perform in warm, cold climates, this is the, all, all this and much more information is going to be to, to be garnered. Now, remember, it's not just about the physical point A to point B, but also the technological gathering of data. Hylion already sits on a truckload, no pun intended, of data. And that's really where a lot of the value in Tesla was earmarked, and it still is. It's going to be the same thing for Hylion when they are able to not only put those trucks into the rigor of the fleets, but Hylion needs to be prepared to actually monitor that rig, monitor that unit, provide that opportunity to actually do their onboard monitoring system to uh, initiate their, um, their cloud and data and algorithmic data processing software. All of this stuff is proprietary to Hylion. They own it exclusively. Now, if they're having to do that for 100 and 1,000 on the onset, it's going to be too much. It's going to be too much. But this is going to allow Hylion to focus on these 10 engage their team of not 1,500 workers, 
Hylion has about what in between two and probably 250 at this point employees. I could be a little bit conservative on that in that they could be approaching that 300 mark. But from my estimation, two to 250, they're not an enormous company yet. They don't have all these hirings in all of these positions to focus on specific fleet observances and monitoring. And I think that's where a value proposition with this company will come to fruition down the line. But if anybody out there is disappointed at the uh, t- the 10 orders, this is what I look at. Um, and I-, I think I would take a thousand order right now, just tongue in cheek, because I would suggest not only can the OEMs not accommodate that order just yet because uh, fleet approvals have not been garnered. They have not been issued by uh, by NIPSA and uh, uh, the EPA certification, the CARB and NIPSA, uh, NIPSA uh, certifications for the, the Class 8 space, which Cummins is going to uh, hopefully uh, help in a collaborative effort to make sure that that, um, that unit can find its way to mass scale through certification. But I think I think the time now is reflective of the orders in how they're looking to carefully and strategically step in to uh, 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 the eventual mass um, uh, commercialization because once they get there, um, there's no turning back. And I know it can be maybe frustrating for some investors, uh, not me, I'm fine. I know inevitably we'll be back half of 2023 and we'll be having a different discussion about this company. Um, And I will be the one that will be the most eligible to have those discussions, um, because it's going to be interesting how sleight of hand is going to take, and I'm going to warn you now, it's going to happen. There are going to be creators out there that jump on the bandwagon, and all I would ask for is just a small smidgen of loyalty. Uh, And I know that's asking for a lot, because I know loyalty in this world is a rare thing. It really is. But don't forget the one person that came on every single week and foot stomped this company when it was absolutely at its worst. Are we past the worst? Well, I would suggest that the data would tell us that we are potentially past the worst. Now, I say that tongue in cheek, I have no idea what's going to happen. But based on the recovery of the stock over the last month, month and a half, two months of basing in this anemic basement price, and actually kicking up above that $4 mark a couple of times now only to be retracted and get rejected at that level. Um, I, I, I think that we have more upside over the next coming uh, months and especially going into the back half of next year. Um, I, I, I don't know. From now until then, we could be talking about a $12 stock. We could be talking about a $30 stock. And I will be talking with the same monotone delivery that I always do, steadfast in trying to earmark what are the facts on this company, what it is looking to go after, what is its realistic chances of actually achieving that end, and, and really trying to separate what it is that is, uh, for the most part, a fairly bullish conviction on the company and the opportunity, uh, why wouldn't we be? Why wouldn't we be bullish on this? Why wouldn't we want to see this opportunity come to fruition? Why wouldn't we, in a bipartisan fashion, uh, provide that tax incentive instead of that methane being off-gassed to uh, the atmosphere? And this is coming from my good friend, Paul, who about eight months ago said this very thing. It just makes sense. The technology is great. Off-gassing methane to the environment is bad for the ozone layer. If we're looking to reduce carbon emissions and the damaging effects from methane, why not take that and use it as a fuel source, right? And and seemingly now it's just it's uh, transition to being a cheerleader for Nikola Motors, which is interesting. They're on their third go on the vote, and I hope they get it. Um, I own calls on Nikola as well. I do not own the stock. I own long calls on the company, but we will see what happens. But stock market investing is one of those things that I think a lot of people get involved with, and then they get angry when they can't figure it out. I think arrogance and ego have a lot to do with that. I really do, man. You got to drop that stuff. And you have to talk about this stuff diplomatically, and you have to look at it on what has transpired where we are currently and where that data could eventually line up into the future 
um, in, in establishing somewhat of a trajectory about where we could be. All right. Now, <laughs> coming up with the data and then looking at the trajectory, that's what separates me from the masses, because I think some people in their ability to uh, maybe forecast what could potentially unfold into the future is a complete 180 from what I think could actually transpire with this company. We will see. We will see. And <clears throat> it will probably prove us all right and prove us all wrong at the same time. What I mean by that is I do believe that we have better times on the horizon for this company. I do. I believe that it will absolutely step up in its order book. I believe that Peter Bilt and Packer have something in mind to help exploit what is a 45,000 truck uh, producing OEM on the low side, 55,000 on the high side. They do about 150 trucks a day, guys. 150. $150 at trucks. Now, if just a small percentage of that is made up of hyper truck ERXs, with the, which is what the OEM mandates would require them to do by 2025, how can you speculate that this company can't make it? Um, I would suggest that if Hylion doesn't make it, it's going to be Hylion's fault. It's going to be their fault, not being aggressive enough not putting the right press in certain areas, uh, pressing to the government when they should have, taking advantage of government and state and local incentives where they should have and didn't, uh, got complacent on the opportunity. And these are all things that I do not see happening. I, I see no reason to believe that Hylion is not working um, on the top shelf with regard to their um, ethical standards of stewardship, their code of governance. And I, I, I think the top guy at the top is doing a great job. Um, I think he's a, a loyal, loyal guy. I, I think by his admission, uh, he is highly on and uh, I give him full credit. I, I have a piece of in the back of my mind, a little bit of, I want to see this guy make it, uh, you know, in, in this world where so many people struggle to get ahead so many people are struggling to get ahead. Um, new technology is um, tough to introduce because it is uh, quickly deemed a target in the eyes of the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the investor community and the hedge fund community. And it's like they don't care about the company or their initiative. They care about you know, their own agenda and, and making more money for themselves. And I think the disconnect between that activity and the little guy. Um, the little guy, the few thousand that I talked about at the top of this video that can tune into a highly on video and really understand what's going on. Um, I, I think there's going to be an immense amount of money that's made in this opportunity. And like I said, I can't go back in time when we do meet that end and reflect back on this time right now. We are in that time now. Uh, and I, I cannot stress enough how important it is for you guys to take heed of this opportunity right now. Do your due diligence. No problem. I'm not telling you to do one thing or another. You can do whatever you want. You know where my loyalty lies. I shared that openly with you guys. Uh, and I don't BS people. If you think for a second that I come on and I say that and I don't hold what I hold, um, you are mistaken. Uh, you do not know me very well. That is exactly down to uh, a few hundred share within a few hundred shares, uh, 12,200 on the share ownership side, and then the leap side of the house, um, those 43 or so contracts, leaps contracts um, that I do have on the company. But the Rowan order is great, 4,000 uh, in the fleet. And it's going to be nice to see us transition from these 10 orders, allow those fleet demos and winter validations as well, and uh, certifications. It's going to be great to see some more footage uh, on how Cummins is helping to collaborate with Hyleon and allow this, uh, this process to really play out and set themselves up to step into mass commercialization. All right, so the reward order was worth mentioning from this week. And the last thing that I'll mention in this video, maybe a little shorter today um, on the delivery. I don't want to be too long-winded. Um, usually, I'm able to, to, to put 60 minutes on the docket for Hylion every week, and um, that's great if the information is there to be garnered. Uh, but um, there was a sighting up in New York from Pretzel, 
and they were running the hybrid uh, diesel electric. And this was a company that I actually tried to Google. I couldn't find it. I don't know if it's a small company, large company. I don't know, but it really does speak to the reach that this company is, is pushing out with their hybrid sales. And remember what the hybrid sales means to 2022. Uh, let me repeat what the hybrid sales mean to 2022. It is it, folks. And the uh, stock owners in this company know exactly what I'm talking about. Are we going to meet that 3 million? Uh, this uh, Q2? Oh, I'm interested. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, Sherry Baker says no problem. I have no reason to doubt her. She is a fantastic CFO. Uh, she is my favorite executive. Sorry, Thomas, but uh, I, I, think, I think Sherry... Um, it is really going to play a critical part here in the uh, in the financial governance of this company. And on the onset, um, I think we are all going to owe her a debt of gratitude for shepherding uh, this company through uh, what will be the most difficult time in the company's history uh, with regard to navigating how they deal with their cash spend against their capital expenditures per year and, and how quickly they ramp up in, um, in, in a careful and delicate balance between the importance of continuing to grow, but also adhering to um, a, a responsible financial um, uh, stewardship and discipline. But um, um, it's, uh, it, it only speaks to the hybrid sales, and that's going to be something that we're going to want to earmark here uh, in this Q2 earnings report here on August 9th. With regard to their sales, I I don't know eight hundred thousand a million, um, you know she said that the the, the sales were probably going to come in in its bulk in Q three and then in its totality in Q four. Ah, boy, that's tough for me. That's just really tough for me. I hope that their CRM that they have, which is forecasting those sales based on existing clients, um, is, is giving them accurate forecasting. Because I tell you what, if they come up short of that three million, uh, it's going to be a real disappointment for, for me. And I, you know, the difference between three and five million is both immaterial. Uh, aside from the company being able to generate revenue, but 5 million is still not going to move the needle, but it would still suggest that there is demand over the product, the hybrid EX product, uh, which is um, uh, indicated by these fleets out there that are being spotted in nature uh, by, by pretzel. <laughs> so I, I don't know much about the company. I, I'm certain that the Discord group has probably found a lot more information on that front. I just don't have it at the time of sharing with this video, but you guys would have that information if you would just follow Silent Alert. Uh, again, Silent Alert is the handle on Twitter. Um, highly recommend it. If you don't like Twitter, which I don't, I hate it. I despise it. It's stupid. Um, but I do follow it for information and I do follow to uh, generate a slight churn uh, on social media because people get all fired up. It's funny and I don't make a dime on Twitter. So um, I do it just, just for fun. But, um, you know, in closing, I, I do want to recap, take a look at the Renewable Natural Gas Incentive Act of 2022. You can just Google that. You can find it. I believe Senator Burr uh, and Senator Warren, I believe, are the two flagship authors of that proposal going forward, uh, kicking out the $1 uh, RNG uh, credit uh, per uh, diesel gallon equivalent unit of RNG sold and used by producers and users alike. Um, it can be used uh, for the blended uh, uh, application as well, uh, which is great. So it'll be awesome to see that come to fruition. We'll track that. It is proposed legislation. Um, it is not finalized just yet, but um, it just shows that uh, people are thinking about this topic uh, in more of a capacity that would suggest that RNG is dead on the vine and not a viable solution to be looked at uh, amongst the landscape of a lot of different viable solutions out there. And I've always suggested again that it's not going to be a one size fits all. I've said that from the beginning. The question is whether or not highly on holdings can find their place in this in this $1 trillion industry. That is the question. Um, I think Tesla will find their place. I think Nikola will find their place. I do. I think they get the votes. I think Hyzon has already found their place and is making waves in this space. And it's, indica it's indicated by the interest on the fleets that are purchasing these products so early on in the game 
which would suggest that we are in a movement toward something much more grand in the EV space. Uh, and now is the time to be taking a look at this space as far as your opportunity uh, to potentially profit from it, guys. So I appreciate you tuning in to this weekly highly on update. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video if you think I've missed something in this weekly recap. Share the message with anybody out there that's interested in the space. Have them come on. I would invite you to subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified when I put these videos up. They usually post on Sunday. I do the weekly update because this company garners that level of close scrutiny, attention, and also praise for the work that they're doing on the EV front, looking to be the leader in electrified powertrain solutions going forward in the class eight space. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.